Today on BRS TV Investigates, it's step two of demystifying a calcium reactor and how to tune it with ease. Hi, I'm Randy, a host for BRS TV Investigates, where we take popular reefing theories, methods, questions, and products, and dive even further than what the manuals and packaging will tell you in order to put them to the test in real world environments, rate them on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty, and share with you, the reefing community, what we find. Okay, so let's get everyone up to speed and on the same page. There are two primary ways to adjust a calcium reactor by either changing the pH or changing the flow rate, and it really isn't as complex as some may think. In the last BRS TV Investigates episode, we identified some very stable strengths or concentrations, which are also known as max saturation levels, of the solution inside the calcium reactor at the most common pH set points that reefers use, which was within the 6.5 to 6.8 range. In our testing example using a vertex reactor filled with two little fishies reborn media, we found that as we adjusted the pH lower or higher, there were some distinct changes to the max saturation levels or concentration of calcium and alkalinity that scaled up and down with the change in pH. For example, using similar equipment that we used for this test, I could reasonably expect that at the pH of 6.4 inside the reactor, the effluent produced should be able to maintain a fairly stable concentration of around 40 dKH alkalinity, and at a higher pH of 6.8, which will dissolve the media slower, we could expect a lower but stable concentration of around 23 dKH. So while each reefer's choice may be different for equipment, like different size reactors, types of media, and on different tank sizes, what is common among them is that if we peg the pH inside our reactors using a pH probe and controller, we should be able to thusly create a fairly stable concentration of effluent to be dosed to the tank, much like two-part. The only question after that then becomes, how much do I need to dose? In this case, rather than determine a single amount of liquid to dose your tank each day, as you would with two-part, a calcium reactor dose can simply be measured by the rate of effluent flow coming out of it. For instance, if I'm dosing 50 mils per minute and I needed to increase my dose, I could just turn it up to 60 mils a minute instead. All right, so now that we're all caught up, let's talk about what we aim to discover with today's investigative testing. It's commonly believed that increasing the flow rates of the effluent from the reactor will decrease the amount of contact time inside the reactor body and then in turn reduce the max concentration or saturation of the effluent it produces. While there is almost certainly some ring of truth to that thought process to some degree, this seems to be the part of running a calcium reactor that starts to make reefers eyes gloss over. So in that spirit, today we plan to assign some actual numbers to this thought process in order to see how impactful changing the flow rate is and if it's even to a degree that's valuable for reefers to concern themselves with as it relates to adjusting a calcium reactor. In order to do that, we plan to test the question, does changing the flow rate inside a calcium reactor really decrease the strength or concentration of the effluent? The answer to this question should help simplify calcium reactors and how we can more easily implement them on our tanks, making them a more attractive option for those who have been interested in one or easier to understand by those currently using one by exploring more in depth about the two most common ways that reefers tune one for their tank by adjusting the pH to meet the tank demands or adjusting flow rates. If we can identify that tuning a reactor is as simple as creating a stable concentrated solution with a pH probe and controller, as well as determining a dose or dose rate for that solution, which can also be pretty easy by using some available calcium reactor calculators, then there should be no reason why a calcium reactor needs to be considered complex. And actually, in some ways, we might find that it requires less maintenance and effort than something as simple as standard two-part. In order to test this one, we plan to measure the higher and lower end pH set points most commonly used by reefers at 6.4 and 6.8 on our vertex calcium reactor using two little fishes reborn media. Since we determined in the last test what each of these pH set points should provide for a stable effluent concentration in terms of alkalinity using a super low 5 mil per minute flow rate, we aim to see how cranking up that flow to 20, 40, 60, 80, and even 100 mils per minute will affect those max saturations. 
We'll peg the pH of the calcium reactor to both of these set points and test the effluent concentration after running 20 mils a minute for 24 hours, then follow the same procedure for the flow rates of 40, 60, 80, and 100 mils per minute, and then monitor if there are any changes from our baseline. Starting with the lowest pH set point of 6.4, we found a max saturation baseline from our initial test at 5 mils per minute to be right around 40.4 dKH. And with the flow increased four times at 20 mils per minute, we see that after 24 hours, it only dropped by a half a dKH to 39.9. Moving on to 40 mils per minute, there's another slight drop to 38 dKH, followed by 60 and 80 mils per minute, where we see less than a half a dKH change for each one to 37.6 and 37.2 respectively. Finally, at 100 mils per minute, which is 20 times the initial flow rate, the effluent concentration levels out at 36 dKH, meaning that overall there was a total difference of 4.4 dKH, or just an 11% change. Frankly, I'd say that an 11% change over that vast array of varying flow rates is far less than what most reefers would have likely anticipated, and honestly, I don't think that it's worth the added confusion of making it a factor to consider when adjusting a calcium reactor. Next, we increased the pH set point to 6.8 and repeated the test, where we start to show similar results to the testing at 6.4. At a baseline of 5 mils per minute at 6.8, we got an average concentration of 23.6 dKH, and after cranking up that flow by 4 times to 20 mils, our average reading ended up being at 24. Granted, this does look like an increase in concentration, but that small 0.4 difference between the two could likely be attributed to the resolution of the hobby grade tester and what I would consider no change at all. At 40 mils per minute, there's a decrease to 22.5 dKH, which would be expected, followed by a drop to 21.2 dKH with the flow rate at 60 mils per minute. After 24 hours of the calcium reactor being set to 80 mils per minute, which is a 16 times the baseline flow rate, we get an average dKH of 20.4. And at the final 100 mil per minute flow rate, or 20 times the initial flow, the test ends right at 19.4 dKH. That means at the 6.8 pH set point, there's only an 18% decrease in total concentration from 23.6 to 19.4 dKH, which doesn't seem to be much at all. Although it is slightly more of a change overall than 6.4, in my opinion, it's just not so impactful that we should try to devise some sort of elaborate equation or thought process to account for the small change. Instead, we just need to end up dosing a bit more. So to answer today's question, does changing the flow rate inside a calcium reactor really decrease the strength of concentration of the effluent? This one gets a three from me on the fantasy scale, since it's apparent that there is some degree of change, but really not in a manner that's worth confusing the calcium reactor adjustment conversation. In the end, I think the result here is that reefers can expect to tune their reactors by just pegging the pH to achieve a stable concentration of effluent, decide on a dose or flow rate, and then make necessary adjustments either through the use of a calculator much like you would two-part, or through intuition by testing the tank's water and adjusting the dose. So what does this mean for those using or considering using a calcium reactor on their tanks? Well, there is one outlier here with the size of reactor you choose and potentially the media you select. We chose the Vertex Calcium Reactor for this experiment as it's a good representation of a size that spans the 5 to 100 mils per minute and potentially even higher, which will not only work on smaller tanks but should also be enough to handle some pretty sizable tanks into the hundreds of gallons. My note here for you is that if you do go with a smaller reactor that holds less media, it is possible that increasing flow rates will have larger effects than we saw on our test, particularly as the media gets used up and there's less of it in the reactor. With that in mind, going with a calcium reactor as big as your space will allow will only increase the stability of the effluent concentration, which in turn lends itself to making it easier to run and tune or adjust. This is for sure one area where bigger is not only better, but also easier, and with more capacity for media with the larger reactor chamber, you'll likely find that you add fresh media less frequently. But for most reefers, this is going to be months, or even just a couple times a year with a reasonably sized reactor. However, in the end, this is something that you could easily test for in your own implementation of a reactor by changing the flow rates and testing the effluent to watch for any drastic changes. 
With this new information and understanding of how to set up and tune or adjust a reactor, we're not done investigating the topic just yet. In future tests, we plan to explore ways to optimize our reactors for our tanks and ensure that we are getting the right tool for the right job. To start us down that path, we recognize that many reactors like this Vertex has a secondary chamber for gassing off excess CO2, which is intended to help raise the already low pH of the effluent before it goes into the tank. So within that, we plan to test exactly how those secondary chambers work. This week we're giving away an adjustable Camor FX STP continuous duty dosing pump like the one we use for these investigative tests. So if you want to get signed up to win, click the link in the description or head over to the site and click on free prizes to get entered. Also join us over on Reef to Reef where we've posted a poll for today's video asking, what's your approach to adjusting or tuning your calcium reactor? I don't doubt that there's going to be some good conversation around this one. And as always, if you have questions about calcium reactors you'd like to see us test, throw a comment below or jump on our hashtag AskBRSTV Facebook group where the BRS crew answer your questions directly. Finally, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get the latest and greatest BRS TV immediately as we release them. And we'll see you next time on BRS TV.